In her time, Hedy Lamarr was considered one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood and one of the greatest actresses of all time. But as an inventor, her genius wasn't as acknowledged. She was born Hedvig Eva Maria Kiesler to an upper-class Jewish family in Vienna in 1914. Her pops would take her on walks, explaining how things worked along the way, and she would take things apart and put it back together as a hobby. By the time she was 18, she had starred in a handful of roles on the silver screen, including a controversial movie called Ecstasy, where there was a brief nude swimming scene and a close-up of her O face. That same year, she married a rich 33-year-old Austrian arms merchant named Frederick Mandel. Apparently, he was a huge asshole guy with ties to Mussolini and Hitler, and he hated the fact that she was in that scandalous movie. He prevented her from pursuing acting, and she said that she was kept a virtual prisoner in their castle home. In 1937, she ran away from Mandel in Austria, eventually making her way to Hollywood and changing her name to Hedy Lamarr. She starred in loads of acclaimed films, but was rarely given any challenging roles and found herself inventing shit while bored. Her homie Howard Hughes even gave her a set of portable engineering equipment to use in her trailer in between takes. She studied the tails of fish and wings of birds and developed a streamlined wing design for his planes, and when he saw it, he called her a genius. She invented an improved version of the day's stoplight and invented a tablet that would carbonize a drink. Neither of them were commercially successful, and Hetty herself said the carbonization tab <laughs> tasted like Alka-Seltzer. But when World War II broke out, she came up with her world-changing invention. She had heard that radio-controlled torpedoes had been talked about, but they had a problem where their signal could be jammed or intercepted. So she was talking with her friend, composer George Antheil. Together, they came up with the idea for synchronized frequency hopping for the radio-controlled torpedoes. And it had a mechanism kind of like a miniature player piano. It would hop between 18 different frequencies and is considered the basis for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi today. She was granted the patent for it in 1942. The Navy used it during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but they didn't use it during World War II, and she had let the patent expire. So when it was finally picked up for use, she didn't see a penny of the billions of dollars of its worth.